Kia ora and hello, this is Arun Jacob, your friendly and frank licensed New Zealand immigration advisor, coming live from Hamilton, New Zealand, like every week. Uh, at the very outset, my apologies, I could not come live yesterday. I know we guys kind of got into this habit of doing a live session every Tuesday, but I had some uh, family visiting from overseas. So I was at the Auckland uh, International Airport yesterday to collect them. And by the time I came back, it was just, uh, you know, way too, uh, you know, late in the day for me to do a live session. So apologies for, you know, not being there yesterday and for all of you who were waiting to catch me live yesterday. Well, we are doing it today and uh, it's back to business as always. And uh, as always, also going to start by showing you my uh, uh, immigration advisors uh, authority license. Uh, this is a license provided by the Immigration uh, Advisors Authority of New Zealand, uh, which was uh, given to me after I passed that course there called the Graduate Certificate in New Zealand Immigration Advice. So I had to study that course and uh, complete that successfully, after which I also had to undertake police verification and uh, submit all those documents and also prove that I have good English skills. So there is a certain criteria for uh, the government of New Zealand to provide that license uh, to people like myself. And once we get that, we can probably call ourselves uh, licensed uh, immigration advisors of New Zealand. So that's the privilege I carry in my life and by virtue of which I'm able to talk to all you beautiful young people in different parts of the world and uh, uh, give you my honest and sincere advice about uh, uh, migrating to New Zealand. Uh, some of you might be wanting to come here permanently and some of you might be wanting to come here only temporarily but irrespective of whatever you are seeking to create as a pathway into New Zealand I have the uh, license uh, to be able to provide that advice and service so uh, I have a license to thrill because I'm gonna help you to come into one of the most beautiful countries on earth so pretty much that's our starting uh, spiel as always my wonderful team would be uh, assisting me on Skype and uh, they'll be kind of giving me some inputs. So we have a wonderful team of people. Uh, we are 33 people at the moment. So uh, for those of you wondering, or oh, is this one guy sitting in a small office somewhere in Hamilton and coming live to us and talking to us about New Zealand uh, education and migration? No, we are a pretty big team. Uh, we are 33 people in different parts of the world. Uh, and uh, so some of us are based in New Zealand, uh, some of us are based in India, and we also have one person working out of the Middle East. So together, what we guys do is we kind of uh, speak to all you wonderful people who want to come to New Zealand and provide that advice and service. Talking about the team in uh, New Zealand, I have some great news to announce. Uh, today was the first day for two of our latest uh, onshore team members to join uh, the AJV team in New Zealand. Uh, the first person is called Sharon. Uh, Sharon worked with Immigration New Zealand Department for 10 years, she actually worked in the Hamilton uh, branch. So she's a Kiwi uh, lady. And so she worked in the immigration department of Hamilton branch for 10 years. And then she took a break in 2016 and she's then went and did the same course like that. Uh, and she is now on the verge of getting her uh, license to practice as a licensed immigration advisor. And I'm going to be her supervisor. So Sharon has joined our team as a uh, right now, she is yet to get her license, but it's only a matter of a few days. She is going to get her license. So more strength to all of you coming to us uh, because we will have another licensed immigration advisor and an ex-immigration officer who is joining our team. So that's great news. The second person who joined us today onshore here in New Zealand, is uh, her name is Virginia. Virginia also worked with the Immigration Department of New Zealand for more than 10 years. And she was one of the senior people in the Immigration Department of New Zealand in the Delhi branch. So recently she took the decision that she is going to move to New Zealand along with her uh, family, her young family. So Virginia moved uh, from New Zealand to India as an international student. And she chose to work with us, uh, AJV Services, as her uh, advisor and as her consultant. And we were very happy to uh, help Virginia not only get into a good course, but we also helped her uh, with her student visa. And so we also helped uh, 
uh, family to get the you know dependent visa. So Virginia came and you know when I realized that there is this wonderful uh, person with ten, more than ten years of knowledge working in the immigration department and has now come to New Zealand. So I invited her to join our team. So Virginia has also kindly consented to join our team in uh, uh, New Zealand. So she is going to be uh, one of our senior people here in New Zealand who will also help all you young people who are coming to us with processes for you know migration and other support in New Zealand. So we're getting rock solid guys. We're getting better and better with uh, each passing day. And also in India, I think we're gonna have at least two more immigration officers uh, who have kind of, because they're shutting down the Delhi branch in India. So some of those officers approached me and said, hey, look, we would like to work for you because we work with you rather with AJV because you guys uphold the principles of the New Zealand migration uh, process and you uphold the integrity of New Zealand migration process. And we're saying, yeah, warm welcome because you and I are essentially doing the same job, which is to uh, pick really good, strong clients to come to New Zealand and do a good professional uh, process for them. So in many ways, the work that my team and I does is no different from the work that an immigration officer does. So we are very pleased to welcome all these wonderful professions onto our team. And what it means to you guys is that you have a solid, rock solid uh, team of people, uh, who, myself, 16 years in the industry, uh, ex-immigration officers, and our senior manager, Mary, who's also about to get a license. So guys, if you're serious about New Zealand, you need to talk to us. Plus we are also planning to appoint another senior person here in New Zealand who will be looking after only helping young people to find jobs and employment because a lot of our students finish their courses and get take the post-study work visa and then they are able to find jobs and then they come to us for further visas. But some of them struggle to find jobs. So we decided, hey, look, there is a gap in the entire process and uh, finding jobs is also going to be important for our students and our clients. So. We also plan to appoint a senior person who is well networked into the New Zealand industry to help our students and our clients find job, find jobs. So when you come to us as an inquiry, we will give you the uh, course uh, selection. We will then do the admission and the visa process for you. Once you land in New Zealand, we will welcome you and help you to settle down. While you're studying, if there are any problems with the institution, we will step in. Any other emergencies, we will step in. After you finish your course, we will provide you with a you know, free service for your post-study work visa. I don't think any other company is offering that. During your post-study work visa, if you're struggling to find jobs, we will appoint someone to help you find the job and work with you. Once you find the job, you want a further visa or a resident visa, our immigration will, team will take care of it. If you want to call your family and other people, we can. our immigration team can also help with that. So, as you can see, we are doing everything possible from the very first step to the last step, which is what most of you desire. You want to come to New Zealand and study here and invest your time, money and effort and not only get a good qualification, but also get a good uh, uh, you know, uh, job and then go on to get residency in New Zealand. So if you're serious, talk to us because we are serious. And as you can see, we are putting the entire assembly line in place so that you guys are supported uh, throughout the journey from point A to point Z. So from the starting to the ending, we've got to stand by you. All right. So talking about uh, helping people, I must also uh, share uh, some important uh, news with you guys. One of our uh, clients, uh, uh, her husband was planning to come to New Zealand to study as an uh, international student. And she is an IT professional and she wanted to accompany on a spouse work visa. And we started the process for the spouse work visa. In the meantime, she just checked with me and said, hey, Arun, can I start applying for jobs? I said, yeah, sure, you have a great profile. Why don't you start applying for jobs? So started applying for jobs and I kid you not, guys, I'm not making this up, I swear. Before she even got her uh, uh, spouse work visa and before she even landed in New Zealand, she got a job in an IT uh, company in New Zealand for a $190,000 per annum job. Trust me, I'm not making this up. This uh, uh, professional IT worker has just now got a 190K job in New Zealand before she even stepped into New Zealand. And it was absolutely stunning. And which is the other thing, you know, 
if people are trying to tell you that there are no opportunities in New Zealand, you know, take, take that with a pinch of salt because if you're good, you know, you have your uh, uh, knowledge, skill, and attitude, you guys will do well. So don't worry about it. Hopefully, we will talk to Nirupama soon once she comes to New Zealand and settles down. She's actually arrived and she's still going through the settlement process. And uh, once she's a bit more settled, I'll probably request her to do a small video for us to tell her how beautiful her journey was and encourage other people find to come to New Zealand. So, yeah, starting today's session with some very positive news. Our onshore team has got now two ex-immigration officers uh, and one about to get license holder. And our offshore team is also about to get some ex-immigration officers and become super strong. Plus, our clients are finding great jobs. All right. So come on, guys. You know, be confident when you're thinking about New Zealand and stop listening to all those losers who tell you there are no opportunities in New Zealand. We don't like to work with them and uh, we will not talk about them. But if you are good, we will definitely work with you. All right. Cool. OK. After my usual initial monologue and my initial dialogue, here are some questions. Uh, OK. Uh, Deep from uh, YouTube asks, uh, Deep Five, Deep keeps asking quite a, quite a lot of questions, even I think remember him from last week. If we study level eight course, do we get three years work with open? Not sure yet, uh, Deep, it is still being discussed, but I believe you also asked the same question last time. So don't repeat your questions, guys. Don't waste your time, you know, because it hasn't changed yet. If it has changed, I, will, I would have started my uh, live session by saying that the pro policy has changed and I would have made an announcement. Actually, I'll also make a video when uh, the policy changes, and you guys can look forward to that. Gautam Chabra also sounds familiar. Hi, Arun. Heard that policy for level eight is changing. There will be no spouse visa, but post study visa will directly be increased three years. Is this true or just a rumor? At this point, uh, Gautam, it is only a uh, discussion. Most likely, the policy will change. They don't. I don't think there will be any changes to the spouse work visa policy if it's a level eight. And I think as per what the government uh, also decided and discussed, if you're doing eight or above, I think they want to give a three years work visa, which is a good thing for people who want to do a three years. But at this point, uh, Gautam, it is still only a discussion. Uh, <clears throat> and it is only still being discussed in the government. Maybe it will become a policy, like I said last time, October, November, perhaps it might come across to your policy. Uh, but uh, uh, also, uh, uh, Gautam, my team is confirming that you're still not uh, working with us. So please go ahead and submit your documents so that uh, we can start the process. And once you engage with us, Gautam, as a uh, signed up AGV student, we will also engage with you more intimately and give you a lot more uh, answers and in-depth information. Sometimes if required, I get on a phone and do one-on-one -on -one phone calls as well. So Gautam, if you're serious about making it to New Zealand and you want to work with us, please start your process so that we can work with you, all right? And guys, all of you watching this on YouTube, if you want to ask some questions, please come to uh, facebook.com slash AJV Global, which is the page for AJV. And that's where the live session is happening, both on YouTube as well as on uh, Facebook. And please ask your questions on Facebook because it's easy for me so that I don't have to keep toggling between both the tabs and I can ensure that you know the broadcast keeps going quite nicely. All right, cool. And also those of you who want to share some details about yourself, Send your CVs to info at agvglobal.com. If I'm not able to answer your questions during the session, I will pick them up. I'll go through the CVs and then come back to you with answers. All right. So that's the deal, guys. So I sit here and practically uh, scream my throat out. And I'd really like it if you guys can, you know, send your uh, contact details and your CV and your, you know, whatever requests you have. Just send it as an email to info at agvglobal.com. Or you can inbox me on Facebook, you know. Uh, my face. Just search for Arun Jacob New Zealand and you should be able to find it. Right. Next question from Sachin Kashyap, who says, how can I get the citizenship? Which family after investment, how much investment is necessary? All right. Sachin, you know, direct citizenship is practically ruled out. You will have to uh, go through the pathway of first becoming a resident of New Zealand, followed by a permanent resident. And then you get citizenship after you lived in New Zealand for at least five years. And you've showed your commitment to New Zealand. So it's not possible to directly buy citizenship of New Zealand, even if you make a large investment, that particular thing is not available. As far as the investment itself is concerned, there is, yes, a resident visa category for investors, uh, which again has got two subcategories in it called 
category one investor and category two investor. I have made a video about this subject on um, and put it up on YouTube. So go to YouTube and search for Arun Jacob New Zealand. Um, and uh, so he will uh, uh, absolutely, uh, uh, and sorry, uh, Arun Jacob New Zealand. And sorry, I got distracted a little bit. I, will, I have made a video and you guys can watch it. It's all about, you know, how to, how the investor category works and how the pathway uh, works. So uh, have a look at that. And I recommend to people who want to make an investment into New Zealand along with their family and come. It's a large investment. It's a lot of money. So what I recommend is that you actually pay me for one hour of my time and get a one-on-one -on -one, uh, discussion with me initially, which doesn't cost a lot of money. It's, uh, you know, it's just a little small amount of money initially. Get all the details from me. After that, if the investment pathway still appeals to you, I think you should go ahead with it. So uh, two, three things, Sachin. First, watch that video on YouTube. Second, uh, send me, send an email to info at hgbglobal.com saying, yeah, I want to have a one-to-one, -one, uh, 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 you know, uh, a professional counseling session with Arun, and then we will take it forward from there. All right, cool. Excuse me. And uh, uh, Gautam, just coming back to you. Sorry, my team has just confirmed that... Uh, one of them uh, said that you were not uh, our student and the other one said that you are actually uh, were working with us. So sorry about the confusion, Gautam. If you're already working with us, thank you so much for choosing us. Really appreciate that. I, I thank you on behalf of my entire team. So, and we will give you all the information that you're looking for. And team, if you're watching this, please don't confusing confuse me by giving conflict in information. Uh, I want you to be clear when I'm talking to someone and please tell me whether that person is working with us or not working with us. Okay, so don't don't uh, confuse me. It's one saying, yes, this person is working with us, and the other one saying, don't. It also sends out a bad uh, impression to people watching us. Okay, uh, next question is from Mandeep Sharma. Uh, after... After completing of diploma, after the complete... After the after completing of diploma of mechanical uh, two year level six from MIT, can I well eligible for work visa? Yes, Mandeep, uh, if you're completing a two year course from MIT, you would be el eligible for a post study work visa. If that's your question, if you want further answers and you're looking for more in depth uh, information, Mandeep, uh, I also suggest you connect with our onshore manager. Her name is Mary Joseph. Uh, you will say you can send an email to mary.joseph at ajvglobal.com and pose your question and we'll connect with you online here in, in New Zealand and on the phone. Uh, or you can also call or text her. Her number is 022-605-2615. So you can also send her a text or a call and you can do that. All right. Cool. Next question is from Samarth. Uh, hi. Uh, this is Samarth. I'm an Indian BBS student from GGSIPU University. Never heard of that. I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't know what that university is. So I wish to do my MBA from New Zealand. Please guide me that what all exams and all I have to clear to be able to get admission. Uh, good question, Samarth. I don't know what your GGSIPU university is, but I'm thinking it's a recognized uh, you know, uh, uh, university which is on par with a lot of other good universities. So no problems with that. In terms of wanting to get into an MBA in New Zealand, of course, you need to have your IELTS examination, which is uh, the International English Language Testing System. That's what IELTS stand for. You need to write an IELTS uh, 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 academic uh, exam. Uh, IELTS has got two versions. One is called academic and one is called general. So for those who are planning to study overseas, uh, uh, including New Zealand, you will need to write the academic version of uh, the IELTS. Uh, and so what you need to do is write academic IELTS and you need to get a score of 6.5 overall with no score less than six in reading, writing, speaking, and listening. So these are the four components of the IELTS. So you need to get a 6.5 overall and no score less than six in each one of this uh, individual components. So that is the IELTS requirement. Now, as far as your other requirements are concerned, you need to obviously get a good score in your bachelor's degree level and uh, so so that you know you're not one of those guys who just got enough marks to pass and move on to the next stage so you need to give confidence to whoever is admitting you 
into a good institution here in New Zealand that, hey, look, this guy is a good academic person and, you know, student and he can, you know, move forward in this thing. So that's really the two things we are looking for is uh, a good IELTS score and good academics. Some of the institutions will also ask you for work experience for MBA. So I don't know if you have work experience or you don't have, but, uh, you know, like I said, which is what the session is all about is to give you some basic information. And if you want more in-depth and detailed information, we have a wonderful and large team of people who can connect with you and give you that, uh, 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 you know, information and give you the absolute precise details. Not only that, we would also like to check with you why you want to do an MBA, you know. A lot of times uh, people want to jump from a bachelor straight into an MBA. And we like to question those uh, decisions. We like to ask you, why do you want to do an MBA? Why not do something else? Why not do something else? You know, we like to engage you in a... You really are meant to go for uh, uh, MBA. And if you're not, then we tell you, hey, look, there are also all these other options. So why don't you look at that? So that's the kind of uh, counseling sessions uh, we do so much. So my recommendation is, Please connect with our team if you have not already connected with the team. And uh, uh, what I, uh, and uh, if you're not already connected with our team, send your CV or contact details and mention I want to do an MBA. And I would like Arun's advice or the team's advice uh, to look at other options as well. Send it to info at ajvglobal.com or connect with me on Facebook through the inbox and we'll pick it up and we will give you the best advice possible. And as I told you, we are people who are not only helping young students while they are in their country, whether it is India or Bangladesh or Sri Lanka or Pakistan or Dubai or Brazil or Egypt. We are working with students from everywhere, but we're providing uh, service and advice not only in your country, but especially after you land here in New Zealand, where the real drama starts for an international student, we are there. We are there to hold you guys up and ensure that you're walking steadily. All right. So, so please get in touch with us, Samad. <clears throat> Oh, Abhijit Steel Sun. Hi, I'm planning to. Abhijit Steel Sun asked, Hi, I'm planning to join Toy Ohomoi uh, in uh, PG Diploma in Management. I want to know how about the scope and about the place, how the part time jobs is that place, and will I get stay back for three years in that field? Well, I mean, everybody wants, seems to be asking me, Will I get a three years work visa? Like I said, it is still a uh, policy and our discussion, most likely it will become policy. But like at this point, you know, there's a pushback from uh, the immigration department. There's a pushback from the education department. So they are still discussing. So so let's see how it uh, goes. Uh, but um, uh, at the moment, uh, the policy is that you will get a one year work visa. But if the policy changes, then they might uh, give three years. I can't predict it at this time. But I think Yes, most likely it will become a three years work visa. Uh, uh, Toyo Homai is a very good institution. It's a government owned and operated uh, Institute of Technology. I am also an ex graduate. Uh, that's my certificate uh, from uh, Toy Ohomoi uh, because earlier uh, my certificate is from an institution called the Bay of Plenty Polytechnic. So there were two polytechnics which were owned by the government. So they merged uh, both those polytechnics. One was called Bay of Plenty Polytechnic. Where I'm a graduate of that. And uh, the other one was called Waiariki uh, Polytechnic. So both those polytechnics got together and they created a much larger uh, Institute of Technology and or Polytechnic. And uh, so that is called uh, Toy Ohomoi. Uh, that is the new name that they came out with, which is a great name. It's a beautiful Maori name. And uh, I think the campus you'll be going to is called Rotorua, which is one of the largest uh, tourist destinations in New Zealand. So there's always part-time work available. Some of our students who've been to Rotorua have found part-time work are, are able to, uh, you know, take care of themselves. I think a couple of them uh, struggled initially a little bit, but then they also managed to find the part-time work. So finding part-time work is not a very big problem, but uh, uh, as regards uh, scope and how you want to do it in the future, it will be Good for us to know a bit more about your background because you're doing a postgraduate diploma in management. But my concern with people getting into management is do they have the ability to be managers? You know, do they have some work experience? If you look back, uh, if you go back and visit some of my, revisit rather, some of my videos on YouTube where I'm talking about people taking up business courses, I strongly advocate saying that, hey, look, guys, if you're coming for 
MBAs and PG diplomas in management and masters in management and stuff like that. It'll be nice if you have some work experience. If you do, because you know that will kind of help you to pathway a little bit stuff like that. So I can now uh, question Abhijit if you have work experience or not. So why don't you email your CV to us uh, to info at ajbglobal.com. We will take a look and come back to you with some suggestions. And if you already have work experience, we'll say, yeah, good, good uh, uh, choice. If if not, we might come back and make some more suggestions. So you're on the verge of uh, taking a very big decision. And I think you need to speak to people like us who are based in New Zealand uh, and who are open, honest, and put everything out there and ensure that you're getting the right advice. All right. So Abhijit, promise me you'll send me your CV and we'll take a look at it. Okay, Abhijit uh, Steelson. Okay, I think it's the same guy, but he's got a different name now. It says Abhijit Richie now. So I'm thinking it's the same Abhijit, okay? And, uh, okay, so, and Abhijit continues saying, my agency is saying I might get stay back for three years for 1.5 years course. Is that true? And is a stay back for one year course and planning to go for October intake? Like I said, be careful about the agency saying it will definitely, you will definitely get three years because it is still not policy. Uh, if it has become policy, then yes, you know, uh, unless it has changed today, I don't know. I mean, forgive me guys, if there was an announcement in the evening and I was busy talking, but to the best of my knowledge, they have not announced the policy yet, but um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know which agents you're talking to. We don't want to say anything wrong about other people, but a lot of them don't know what they're talking about. Most importantly, they don't paint you the right picture about New Zealand because they're not present here. Uh, nor are they, you know, very invested into your future. So, but, you know, we guys are really invested in the future for all our students. You'll be here living with us, uh, you know, so we'll run into each other, we'll meet, we'll catch up. So if you're really serious, I think you should talk to us, Abhijit. And, you know, it's not too late if you're already working with somebody and you're given the documents to that agency. If there is a possibility that we can switch you and bring you over to us, yeah, we will do that. And you get so many free services and free advice anyway, you know which I don't think any other agency offers. We even provide a free post-study work visa process to all our students. So there are a lot of benefits working with us. So I think it makes uh, sense for you to just to connect with us and we'll see what we can do for you. All right. So send us that email, Abhijit. Matthews Mamen asks, how long does it take the process until PR? Uh, process from where, Matthew? You haven't mentioned that. I mean, if you're still outside New Zealand and you're planning to do a uh, uh, first, uh, you know, uh, permanent residency process. Uh, like, you know, as I keep repeating in some of my videos, it's now almost impossible to get direct residency in New Zealand because not only should you get 160 points for your age, qualification, work experience, partner qualification, so on and so forth. So there is a matrix of points. So not only should you get 160 points, but you also need to match one of the two criteria, which is you should either have uh, an employment or offer of employment in New Zealand, or uh, you should, uh, of skilled employment rather, and, or you should have studied in New Zealand for at least two years and got yourself a master's or a PhD. So not only should you get 160 points, but you should also match one of these two criteria. So if you're not, then we as strongly advocate the study plus settle pathway, where you can come as an international student, study, get the post-study work visa. Right now it is one year. But if policy changes and you're doing the right level of course, it could be three years. During that post-study work visa, you could actually find yourself a job. And when you find the job, you fulfill that condition, which says that you have skilled employment in New Zealand. And that's when you get uh, your, uh, you get your uh, residency. And once you get your residency and you live in New Zealand for at least two years, you get something called your permanent residency. So that is your entire pathway. Uh, Matthews, you know, from start to finish, I would say one, if you're not studying the New Zealand one year of study, one year of post-study work visa, maybe another couple of years to find, I'd say about approximately five years to get up to the permanent residency stage. All right. Cool. Amit Mondal, uh, I want to complete my MBA from New Zealand in marketing field. Please guide me about the subject. And after study, job demand. Can I get to able? Uh, can I able to get job in marketing? 
Uh, Amit, I don't see any reason why I can't get a job in marketing. Some of our uh, uh, student, uh, some of our students uh, are uh, 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 graduates who have done marketing, and uh, they have gone on to find good uh, uh, employment. So I don't see any reason why you can't uh, find a job in marketing, Amit. And you also want to do an MBA in New Zealand, which is a good level of uh, getting a specialization. But as I keep telling for people who are coming for business courses, if you already have a good, strong background and core strength in marketing, I think you obviously should pursue it. But if you have not had real solid experience in marketing, then also you can pursue it. But sometimes my advice is to pick up more generic course where you, know, you can uh, kind of pick up uh, knowledge about administration, finance, human resources, sales and marketing, uh, you know, all the various components of business, really. And then once you complete your course, you're able to choose a, a, a job or a career in any one of these many business areas. So that is one way of looking at it. Or if you're really strong in marketing, I'd say, yeah, go for marketing and then pick up a job in it. So I don't see any reason why you will not get a job in marketing. Uh, I mean, especially I think if you can acquire if we, in, as part of your MBA or your postgraduate course, whichever you're doing, uh, if you're going to a good university like University of Waikato, where I live in Hamilton, it's got a great business school. I think they've got an excellent uh, marketing uh, department. So uh, that, that's possibly one of the places you can consider. And uh, if you're doing a marketing course, perhaps you could choose through a, a few papers in digital marketing, which is the new buzzword for all marketers worldwide. And New Zealand wants to sell it goods and services to uh, you know, the entire world because we're a small country stuck to the bottom of the earth. We are far away in Pacific from everybody else. And the only way we can reach out to you know, the rest of the global markets is like how I'm doing right now through Facebook and YouTube and this is digital marketing. So that's what it is. So, you know, so there is always a scope for marketing in New Zealand, but a few papers in digital marketing, I think would also enhance your uh, ability and employability. So that's something I would recommend. Amit, if you are not already speaking to AJV, please talk to us because we'll be very keen to work with someone like you. Because, And as I told you, we are kind of people who don't just do your admission and visa and then forget you. We continue to talk to you even after you come to New Zealand. And we engage with our students very intimately and constantly we are providing them with advice at each step and telling them what to do, what not to do, which areas to go into, what... Uh, jobs to look for, what happens after you get the job, what visas to apply for. So we're doing a lot of uh, free advice to our students. So uh, connect with us, Amit. My team will also connect. And if you're not already working with us, I strongly encourage you and welcome you to work with us because I think your chances of finding employment and uh, a successful career would also get enhanced when you work with someone like AJV who is present in New Zealand. And as I told you at the start of this uh, broadcast, uh, our team is getting super solid. So we guys are going to stand by you. All right. So Amit, send me that uh, um, uh, CV of yours to info at ajvglobal.com and we will take it forward from there. All right. Cool. Ankit Wagila. Hi, I am an AJV student. I'm also AJV Ankit Jagdish by Wagila. I want to know about your best judgment, whether to choose Napier or Auckland campus for EIT. I got an uh, offer letter from EIT Auckland. Uh, good question, Ankit. And Ankit, hi, I do, of course, remember you. Uh, uh, as always, first and foremost, thanks for choosing AJV. You are our boy now. We will take care of you. Um, as far as uh, choosing between Napier or Auckland, uh, I'll be honest, I would actually recommend Napier over Auckland for two, three different reasons. Uh, now, number one, Napier is nicer, quieter, calmer. It's very cool. It's a lovely town. Check, go back to YouTube and check my video about Napier. I actually stood on the beach in Napier and, you know, used my selfie stick and shot a video uh, of showing uh, Napier a little bit. So it's a very nice town. It's very pretty as a town, uh, number one. Number two, your cost of living will be lower in Napier, uh, Ankit. So that's number two. Number three, the government is working on proposals to create regional skill shortage lists. So once the government starts creating regional skill shortage lists, that means there'll be more uh, possibility of, you know, uh, of getting yourself work and employment in some of the regions because the government is trying very, very hard 
to decongest Auckland. So the cost of living in Auckland is pretty high at the moment. And so overall, you also don't get that full on New Zealand experience in, uh, in Auckland. Uh, so I would actually recommend the EIT uh, Napier because it's a very uh, good campus. I've been to the campus in EIT Napier and the senior team sits there. So any issues and stuff like that, they'll sort it out. I mean, they would also do it in the Auckland campus, of course. But I think just from your future, even if you end up getting a job in Napier, you also get 30 points more, three zero, you know, 30 points more towards your residency, which you will not get in Auckland. So anybody getting a job Outside Auckland actually gets 30 points more towards residency. So I think that's what uh, you need to do. And also while studying, if you're able to pick up any part-time job, you're okay, you'll take care of yourself. Like I told you, the cost of living in Napier will be lower than... I would recommend go to Napier because that's also the government's strategy to decongest Auckland. So when you go with the strategy of the government, I think there'll be more benefits for you. So that's my suggestion. Plus, Ankit, you will always have us to uh, speak to us all the time so we will continue to give you that advice but thanks once again for choosing uh uh AJV Ankit and I hope to meet you in uh, New Zealand soon all right cool Vishwet Tucker um okay can Canadian work in education help in settling New Zealand how's the reflection of Canadian life work culture on New Zealand very interesting question and my team tells me Vishwet Tucker is also an AJV client. Vishwet, you are famous. See, my team just wrote saying there. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks, Vishwet, uh, for uh, choosing to work with us. Uh, like I was telling Ankit just now before, uh, always a pleasure to welcome all you young people to work with a young uh, company like AJV. I'm the oldest guy in the company, by the way. So, yeah, so, but the rest of my team is all like really young. So, yeah, we're what we, we have a solid uh, uh, amount of experience amongst all of us. Like I told you, uh, today two uh, ex-immigration officers joined us and uh, both of them have more than 10 years of uh, work experience. We're getting stronger and stronger. I'm the only guy getting older, by the way, in this whole company. So the question, can Canadian work and education help in settling New Zealand? I think the way it helps, uh, Vishwet, is that uh, you already have been exposed to uh, Western culture. Uh, and uh, in my opinion, because I lived and worked in the U.S., I lived and worked in U.K., uh, then I worked in, uh, of course, I lived and worked in New Zealand, uh, and I also worked in India. You know, I used, I started my career in India, and I worked there, I think, for about nine years. Before I went abroad, I went to U.S., then I came back to India, then I went to U.K., then I did some work there, came back to India, then I came to New Zealand, loved the place, stayed back here. So, so because I also traveled to two, three different countries and I was actually staying and working in those places. I think it's, it's your, your fact that you already have a little bit of Canadian education and work experience will familiarize you with the Western world because by and large, they're all very similar. Uh, the Western English speaking countries are quite similar. Uh, they're almost like the, they're all like, you know, five or six brothers who are in different parts of the world. So, with UK being uh, one of them, US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and Ireland. So those are the six English speaking brothers of the world. And uh, so yeah, culture is very similar. The fact that you already worked in uh, Canada and studied there is a big advantage because it will make you settle into New Zealand faster. Uh, New Zealanders are very friendly. I've heard that Canadians are also quite friendly. One of the guys, uh, senior managers in New Zealand education. Her name is James. Uh, he heads uh, one of the institutions we represent called New Zealand Tertiary College. So James is a Canadian, by the way. So I and James are, we, 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 we spoke quite a few times and fantastic gentleman. And, you know, if he's representative of what Canadians are, I think Canada also is a very cool, nice place. And the New Zealanders are very friendly. And so, I think your advan your uh, experience from Canada will reflect very well in New Zealand, actually, Vishwet. So, yeah, and you know, if you uh, because you're already used to the Western culture and style of living and doing things, and so you acquired that discipline of the Western world already. So, oh, definitely an advantage. Plus, you have us. So, yeah, perfect combination, man. Good, good, good stuff. You've done well. 
Michael Chandra. Uh, quickly checking to see if my team has given me any other instructions. Okay. Michael Chandra asks me, Hey, Ajay. Hi, uh, Michael. I am not Ajay, man. I am Arun. <laughs> but it's okay. People, a lot of people call me AJ, so that, that's fine, I guess. Uh, and I'm confused to do, confused. Do you think structure or roading and transportation is better for long term in New Zealand? Uh, good question, Michael, because um, I think structural engineering and roading and transportation all come under the wider umbrella of civil engineering. Uh, civil engineering is right now in the skills shortage list of New Zealand. Uh, and so because we have a long term uh, skill shortage in the civil uh, engineering um, area of New Zealand, both structure, structural engineering as well as roading and transportation will do well because you know we need to build a lot of buildings. We already have a crisis in Auckland and a few other places but with housing. So there's a lot of uh, housing activity happening, which would mean we require structural engineering. And then there is a lot of, because of the you know uh, growth in the economy and the growth in the population, more and more roads are being created. So, you know, there's an equal, I would think there's an equal demand for structural as well as roading and transportation engineers. But one of the simplest tests you can put is to go to our Lord, uh, uh, biggest, uh, uh, job website. It's called seek.co.nz. Go to seek.co.nz, choose engineering as the drop down, and then there should be sub uh, drop downs, uh, which uh, are structural engineering and roading and, uh, you know, transportation engineering. Have a look to see which is throwing up more job opportunities. And then based on that, you can take a call. It's one way of doing it. But I think more importantly, uh, it is, uh, it's got to be driven by uh, your heart and your mind because, uh, you know, these are, I know while they're related, there's also a difference. It's like I keep telling in all my broadcasts that I want to be a filmmaker. And uh, if somebody, so under filmmaking, you have documentaries and you have feature films. So if somebody asks me or tells me, you know, both are fine, but, you know, I, I, I can't, uh, I won't accept that answer because my real passion is to make feature films and not documentaries. I probably can make documentaries as well but my real passion is in feature films so similarly you got to figure out as a civil engineering guy whether you want to uh, stick to uh, structural or whether you want to stick to roading and transportation both i think uh, have an equal scope but like i said you do the test yourself go to seek.co.nz take a look that might help you form your uh, thoughts better but more than anything else uh, michael i think uh, whether you're choosing structural engineering or roading and transportation, I think the most important choice you need to make is to work with us, to work with uh, AJV, because uh, like I keep saying, we can provide you with a lot of ongoing advice. Uh, I don't know at this point whether you're working with us or not. Uh, my team, I think someone is typing, so maybe they'll confirm that you're working with us. But uh, yeah, if you're not working with us, Michael, please connect with us, send us your CV to info at uh, ajvglobal.com. Would love to take a look at it and come back and probably say, hey, look, much more easier if you choose uh, structurer or something like that. All right, cool. So please send an email, Michael, with your CV to info at ajvglobal.com. Arash Deep Singh asks, sir, can you suggest uh, some medical courses in New Zealand? Uh, Arash, we would, Arash Deep, we would love to suggest some medical courses in New Zealand. However, we would like to know what is your background? Uh, at what level are you looking at? Are you looking at, at the postgraduate level? Are you looking at a graduate level? Are you looking at a diploma level? You have not given any um, uh, more information about yourself. Absolutely, we would love to. I mean, we are... Uh, a country open to international students, good international students, who will come and uh, not only acquire world-class education in New Zealand, and, but we hope some of you will go on to become our future skilled workers and residents and citizens of New Zealand because we have a skill shortage here in this country. So we would really love to see some of you also fulfill our skill shortages. But, uh, so, and medical uh, field is always in the skill shortage, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, areas as well. So you need to tell, uh, give us more detail. We haven't shared a lot of detail, uh, Arashdi. 
So I would recommend that you send uh, an email to info at ajbglobal.com with your CV and some background about whether you're already working or you just finished your studies, if you finished your studies at what level, so on and so forth. Based on that, we'll come back and give you some suggestions. But there's some really good uh, medical related courses, uh, RSD, including one of the courses I can think about would be in medical laboratory science because there is a demand for laboratory scientists at the moment. And uh, there is a, uh, I don't think it comes in a medical, but food science is also in demand at the moment in New Zealand. So there are various science courses we can come back and suggest to you, but only when you connect with us. So either you inbox me or you send an email to info at ajvglobal.com and we'll be happy to do that. All right, cool. And uh, uh, Michael Chandra, if you're still there and watching me, my uh, senior manager uh, has just confirmed that you're not working with us. And uh, I would uh, strongly uh, suggest Michael get in touch with us because your confusion is a very classic confusion. We would love to help you. And we will also connect you to some of our students who have done uh, civil engineering in New Zealand in both construction as well as road and uh, transportation. And based on that, you can take a call. All right. So if you're serious about succeeding in New Zealand, Michael, strongly recommend that you get in touch with us. All right. So next question is from Siva I, Gurunathan. He says, I'm Siva from Tamil Nadu in India. I want to go to apply for the job in Australia, but it would be a spontaneous process. Vanakkam uh, Siva Gurunathan. <laughs> You're from Tamil Nadu, so I'm greeting you in Tamil. If you want to apply for a job in Australia, unfortunately, we can't help you because we are a very New Zealand uh, uh, focused uh, company. So I don't know how I can help you with Australia, but uh, yeah, I mean, I would say get onto the Australian websites or or contact an advisor who deals with Australia and talk to them. All right, Siva, so, well, sorry about that. I can't give you more information than that. My team has also confirmed that Arish Deep Singh is also working with us. Thank you, Arish. Much appreciate your confidence in us. We will help you with the right course choice for you. Okay, so please, please be in touch. All right, so uh, uh, I remember this name as well. Next one is from Srijan, uh, who writes his name in Hindi. So thankfully, I can still read my Hindi language, which I learned in my school days, but I can still read it pretty well. Srijan asks, uh, I had my previous rejection in New Zealand and grad diploma in eneology. Is there any risk if I now apply to PG diploma course other than eneology? I think, um, uh, Srijan, it is very important you share your decline letter with us uh, because it's, it's easy for me to say there's no risk, but you know that's not being a good advisor. Because you're coming to me, I tell you came last week as well. I remember your name because I made the same joke about your uh, Hindi letters. And so it's easy for me to say, yeah, there's no risk, go ahead and apply. But we are not people like that. We are people who want to get into the detail of each case and understand how we can help you guys better. So, Srijan, you need to send your decline letter and uh, also your contact details to uh, info at ajvglobal.com. Uh, that will get forwarded to me because I'm the licensed immigration advisor. And I'll take a look at that decline letter and see what are the reasons. Why did they decline you the uh, the, uh, the previous time? And based on that, tell you whether, you know, you're good enough to go and apply for another course. Just because you got declined for graduate diploma, if you now go to PG diploma, it doesn't mean that the visa officer will say, oh, great, this man has now suddenly gone to PG diploma. So I'll give him a visa. It doesn't work like that, my friend. So there are a lot of other factors that um, visa officers consider. Like I told you, in our team itself, we have some ex-visa uh, uh, officers. And I'm a very old veteran uh, licensed immigration uh, advisor uh, who's been in the industry for a very long time. We will take a look at it, understand what it is, and then uh, let you know whether they can apply or not. So if you're not in touch with our team's region, because you're a guy who's already had a, uh, you know, a, a visa decline before i think it's very important to get in touch with us because we are very good at fighting the uh, declined cases if we trust you and if we believe that you were a good student uh, whose case was declined uh, for uh, uh, you know not very strong reasons we will fight it and we'll bring it back to you srijan but you need to get in touch with us you can't be working with somebody else and seeking my advice if you want my advice and the support and services of my team you need to 
uh, come forward and share your contact details and your decline letter and respect us, you know, because you're seeking my advice. So the least you need to do is get in touch. And why are we doing this? For your benefit and for our benefit. You know, you become our client, we earn some revenue and you get the visa for which you're planning. So it's got to be open, transparent and a win-win situation where we come together. So a lot of you guys talk to us, send your inquiries and later when we try to get in touch with you, you disappear and you say, oh, I'm, what, I'm working with X agency or Y agency. Then don't come to us. You know, you, you're, if you want to work with us, be open, bold, come forward and work with us. All right. Okay. okay. Mm. Ansar Kareem asks me, uh, my team just confirmed, Srijan, that you're not working with us. So I think you need to send us your decline letter. Send your decline letter to uh, info at ajbglobal.com. Plus, I want to see your contact number. It will get forwarded to me. I will read and I will say, yep, whether we're taking this up or not. Plus, you need to commit to work with us, all right? Because we will get you your visa if we believe and trust that you deserve a visa. All right? Cool. Radio, who's next? Ansar Kareem. Hi, sir. What about graduate diploma in highway engineering from NZIHT? Good institution, good course. I just gave a big, long... Uh, uh, speech about three or four minutes back on sir. So after the session is over, if you go to the uh, re recording and, you know, kind of wind back a little bit, three or four minutes, you'll see how I was comparing structural engineering uh, with uh, uh, roading and transport. But NZIHT is a very good institution. It is a part of uh, an institution called Western Institute of Technology at Taranaki, which is a government owned and operated institute of technology nziht is like a school within uh, a WITT, and uh, so they've set up a, a school in hamilton where i live in fact uh, nziht is about um, 10 minutes in that direction Ansar. and uh, i know you're also coming as an ajv student so look forward to meeting you in hamilton i hope you play cricket because once this cold weather is gone and winter is gone and the bright sunshine comes back I like to play cricket and I'm also trying to get some of us AJV boys together and form a cricket team. So good course, good demand for the course. Uh, and you're doing the best thing by choosing to work with AJV. So overall, full marks to your selection, uh, Ansar. And I hope your process is going on well. Uh, if there are any issues at any time, uh, don't hesitate to get in touch with us and we will sort it out. All right. So thanks, Ansar, for choosing AJ, we much appreciate it. All right, where are we? Oh. Green tea, guys, in case you're wondering what it is. I just have this massive mug. <laughs> okay, uh, next one is from Aman Digger, I think. He yeah, says, I got level seven visa. How can I get post work study visa? You need to apply after you finish your course. That's what you've got to do, Aman. That's how we get your post-study work visa. You've got to complete your level seven successfully, pass it, get the course completion certificate, and apply for the post-study work visa, and then you will get it. For our students, for AGV students, we offer a free process. So we actually do the post-study work visa. It actually goes under my uh, uh, process. So I actually work with the... Uh, all these post-study work visits and put it through. And then another uh, licensed advisor is joining us shortly. And we offer this free of cost to our students. So if you guys are listening and you're wondering, well, how come these guys do it free of cost for us? And how can I get them to do it for me? Nothing, just become our students. We get the benefit. We get a commission from the institution for representing you and bring you, in, you know, into New Zealand. And because we earn revenue through you, we are saying thank you very much. So in return, as our gratitude, we will support you, guide you, keep giving you advice. So that's the way it works. All right. Cool. Okay. This is Chuchan Chuchan M. Paul. Chuchan M. Paul, I think. Okay. Chuchan M. Paul. Right. Says, Hi, Arun. I'm studying in New Zealand, level eight course. I would like to avail your service. Could you please tell me about your fees to become your client? Uh, hey, Paul. I'm calling you Paul because I'm, I'm not, a, I hope I'm. I, I think I'm not pronouncing your first name properly. So, Paul, it's easy to become our client. Just uh, connect with us, please. You can inbox me or 
send an email to mary.joseph, that's M-A-R-Y dot J-O-S-E-P-H at hvglobal.com. She is our senior manager and my senior colleague who also lives in Hamilton. And uh, she speaks response to all the uh, local onshore. So she's actually our onshore manager who even I report to her, you know, and she's quite a taskmaster. So I better behave and work well <laughs> or she bring me to task. So uh, jokes about uh, Mary is our onshore manager uh, who is responsible to welcome our students, uh, make sure they're settling into the course properly. Any problems with the institutions she takes care of. Uh, I actually assist her really. And we're now under her, there's also going to be an employment manager who will help our students to find jobs. And we also have an immigration team. As I told you at the start of this broadcast, we have two ex-immigration officers who have joined our team here in New Zealand. And so both of them also work with Mary and they report to her. I report to her as well. So, so get in touch with Mary, send her an email, or you can also text or call her 022-605-2615. Okay, cool. Send her a text and she'll call you back, uh, Paul. But thanks for choosing us. I appreciate it. We are very good at what we do. And, you know, I think some of the advantages of, for those of you guys who are already in New Zealand and wondering what are the advantages of choosing AJV uh, for your onshore yeah, like I said, you know, uh, we work with AJV students as well as non-AJV students. For AJV students, we give a very hefty 25% discount for all the services we provide. Uh, they also get a lot of free advice. For non-AJV students, also we provide the service, but we charge the full fees. Right? Once you become a client, of course, we will treat you as a client. And you'll continue to get the same friendly, frank advice from, you know, uh, all, my, all our entire team in um, uh, New Zealand. So that, that's the way it is, Paul. So get in touch with Mary. I have shared her uh, email address as well as her uh, phone number. And Mary works for, and, and the other, uh, other advantage I think you guys will get working with AJV is we like to work to your convenience. Uh, we know most of you are studying or working in the daytime. So we do a lot of our work after six o'clock in the evening after you guys come back home and settle down, have a wash, eat some food, and settle down comfortably. In fact, after I finish this uh, live session, I will need to get back on the phone and start answering all those missed calls and connect back with my clients. And, you know, we're constantly even giving. So the advantages you have with us, friendly, frank, honest to a T, and uh, convenience. You know, we will work to your timings and your convenience and ensure that the process gets done properly. Like I told you, we also have a great onshore team now. So... Nathan, you want a phone number? Uh, if you're looking at a phone number uh, in India, I'm not sure where you are uh, asking from. But if you are looking at the asking for a phone number in India, we actually have uh, a toll-free number in India for all our clients. And the toll-free number in India is on our Facebook banner, which is part of this page. And I can give that to you quickly. I'm trying to search, guys. I don't know it by heart. Right. So the toll-free number in India is 1-800-103-6525. 1-800-103-6525. I must pin it to my board so that next time I don't have to open another tab. If you're in New Zealand, then the number to contact is 022-605-2615. That's Mary's number. Mary's our senior manager and she receives all the initial phone calls and uh, inquiries so please connect with mary if you're already in new zealand if you're in india and you want to connect with our team as i told you the toll free number is 1-800-103-6525 all right cool that's the one guys and if some of you say no i don't want to talk i just want to send an email not a problem uh, uh that is info at ajvglobal.com all right, cool. Hari Krishnan. Um, uh, hello, sir. How about studying level seven from a university comparing with level eight from a college? Um, Hari, New Zealand doesn't care about levels, frankly speaking. Uh, the UN institutions, frankly speaking, a lot of employers don't care about levels either, quite frankly speaking. Uh, Universities and institutes of technology like Toy Ohomai are all owned and operated by the government uh, uh, of New Zealand. 
Uh, they were started for different purposes. News, uh, obviously, institutions as uh, higher places of learning and research and academic, uh, you know, growth kind of a thing is what a university most in any part of the world is. And uh, institutes of technology in New Zealand, uh, also known as polytechnics, where Toy Ohomai is one of them, was uh, were started mostly as technical uh, orientated uh, institutions which were teaching trades like carpentry, plumbing, so on and so forth, and then kept growing, and then they kept adding more and more technical courses. They are now teaching very high-level courses. In fact, there is one um, institute of technology called, uh, which it's not a university, it's an institute of technology, called Unitech in Auckland, and uh, they actually teach, they have one course which is a doc doctor, doctor of something, uh, so, yeah, so they're going right up to that level as well. So you're actually good to go either to a university or to a, to an institute of technology like Toy Ohomai. There isn't a lot of difference. The campuses are good. Everything is good. Uh, so quite frankly, I think you're good to go to either place. Because your question is quite good, actually, at a, at a slightly deeper level, because you're saying you seem to be thinking that, oh, university is higher in institution ranks, but the course is lower, whereas if I go to a higher course in an institution, that's lower. So I can see the kind of equation you're struggling with. Now, I would say, I would recommend that you actually look at um, uh, the papers in each of these uh, courses that you're looking at. Are those papers attractive to you? Are they, are they kind of talking to you? Are, are those papers saying, okay, yeah, look, this is a paper I would love to do, you know, is there qualitative analysis or marketing or so on? So those papers need to talk to you. If they talk to you, choose that course, whether it is level seven from a university or a level eight from a uh, ITP, frankly, doesn't matter. But if the rules change in the near future where they are saying that if you do a level eight program, you might get a three year course. So by virtue of that possible rule change, it might make sense for you to opt for the level eight uh, from Toy Ohomai. That's my recommendation, okay? And um, Hari, you have not mentioned whether you're working with uh, AJV or not. If you're not, I would strongly recommend that you uh, consider working with us because this advice I'm giving you is for two minutes because it's a live session and there are a lot of other people who are asking me questions. So I've got to kind of answer and kind of keep all my answers brief to each individual question, but uh, yeah, it'll be awesome if uh, you can uh, connect with us and we would love to uh, kind of keep going further. Kirky Icha says, hello, uh, hi Icha, lovely name by the way. Um, Sahan Damage, okay, I think my team has also now started ringing the bell. Uh, And so it's saying time is up. Okay, so I'm going to answer Sahan Damage's question. Uh, Sahan is uh, working with one of my colleagues called Saili. And uh, uh, we're awaiting your documents, uh, Sahan. So please send your documents. I just got an update from the team. So please send your documents, Sahan. But your question is, um, I have a bachelor in architecture, five-year honors degree with two years of experience as a junior project project uh, architect and looking to study GD in construction project management. Still uh, cannot decide which institute to go to, Unitech or ARA, or, or ARA, Auckland or Christchurch. Please advise considering living costs, finding jobs part-time as well as jobs after studies and applying for PR. Good question, Sahan, and I'll keep this brief. Uh, lovely background as well, by the way, you know, architecture with five years and honors degree with two years of experience. Fantastic background, Sahan. We are really looking forward to working with you. Plus, you are now choosing a graduate diploma in construction project management, which is great. So you're also adding another feather in your cap, so to speak, and you're gonna increase the opportunity scale. Uh, Auckland, biggest city in the North Island. Christchurch, biggest city in the South Island. Auckland, tons of construction happening. Christchurch, Tons of construction happening. Cost of living, I think Christchurch will be slightly lower as compared to Auckland. Uh, and uh, Christchurch, also much more relaxed and very cool. And remember what I uh, shared with another 
person who asked me a question in this live chat. If you are outside Auckland and you get a job in future after you complete your course, you get an additional 30 points towards residency. Now that's a massive uh, chunk of points, uh, Sahan, towards your eventual residency, which I think is a, an advantage in itself. And the government, as I told you, is trying very hard to decongest uh, Auckland and make more people go into other cities and towns. So if you choose Christchurch, you're actually aligning with the thought process of the government of New Zealand. So obviously there will be some policy benefits that you'll be able to take advantage of. And like I told you, the biggest advantage is that you already will get 30 extra points uh, after you find a job towards your residency. To me, that's a massive advantage. So I would say go to Ara, beautiful campus. I've been to that campus. I went when it was still called CPIT, which was Christchurch Polytechnic Institute of Technology. Now they renamed it and call it Ara, which by the way means the way. Ara means the way, you know, so they're kind of showing the way to their students. So that's what the meaning of Ara is. I'm showing off my Maori skills now. So that's my Maori certificate. So I can speak a bit of Maori. So that's what it is. But overall, I think good profile. I would recommend uh, considering Christchurch because Ara is a fantastic institution good opportunities in Christchurch, a lot of construction uh, activity happening. And I think they have a pretty serious shortage of construction workers as well. So that will be my recommendation, Sahan. And uh, thanks for choosing to work with AJV. You're going to join our brilliant group of other lovely Sri Lankan uh, clients that we have had the pleasure of working with in the past and working with already right now. And there's a very good chance one of our future team members is also going to be a Sri Lankan person who's also got a license like that uh, from the government to become a licensed immigration advisor. So, yeah, fingers crossed, but hopefully we'll go on to become the best ever uh, New Zealand education and migration company. But tell you what, guys, we can't do it by ourselves. We need your support. So if you like what we're doing, you know, my coming online and speaking to you guys and what the rest of my team does. And there are a few other questions, which unfortunately I will not be able to cover today because there are quite a few questions. I'll see if I can quickly run through them and see. But there seem to be quite a few questions here. So I may not be able to answer all of them, guys, but I can see Veena Kunial says that she's having a good uh, uh, experience with my team. Thanks, Veena. I appreciate your feedback. And, you know, we'll continue to stand by you even after you come to New Zealand. So thanks for that, Veena. Really appreciate that you chose to work with AJV. Um, Rinko asked, what is the future of interior architecture in New Zealand? Connect with us, Rinko. Please send an email with your profile to info at ajvglobal.com and we'll give you more information. Ravi Chaudhary asks, I'm a chef right now. I'm working in Singapore. Total nine years experience. Please tell me how can I apply for New Zealand? Ravi, please send your CV to info at ajvglobal.com. Uh, Abhijit steals and says, thank you for the reply. Now I'm currently running one of my family business. Mm, uh, and, you know, he's given some uh, advice, details and says he'll send the CV. Thanks, Abhijit. Send your CV. We will connect and give you more information. Me too, Sanit Lutra says, hello. Hi, is, uh, Lutra. Send your CV if you want some information from us to info at ajvglobal.com. Uh, Sharek Hasnot Rafi asked how can you tell uh, how an international state gets PR in New Zealand. Rewind back this broadcast a little bit and I've explained the process, Sharek, how you can actually get residency from the student stage to residency, but also send your CV to info at ajvglobal.com and we'll connect and give you more advice. Uh, Pratap Chandra says, hi, this is Kiran. I'm pursuing my postgraduate diploma in Fiteria. How were the opportunities after my course completion? Uh, I've answered this question, but it's going to be three years of work, one year. No idea, Pratap, we are still wondering. Everybody is still waiting for that. How can I get a job? Start applying or connect with Mary. Send an email to mary.joseph at ajvglobal.com and we will see how we can help you. Anurag, she, Arun, I'm working in IT production support, having more than six years of experience. What do you think about jobs related to this in New Zealand? IT is in our skill shortage list, so the prospects will be good. Please send your email, your CV to info at ajvglobal.com Anurag and we'll take a look and come back to you. Vikas Sharma, I have been told that on a level nine course, you get a PSWB for one year and if you find a job in the line of study, 
we get an employer assisted work visa for two years. Is that correct as per the current policies? Yes, Vika, Vikas, it's absolutely correct as per the current policies. Sri Ram says, what's the difference between Canadian PR and New Zealand PR benefits? Too long, please Google it. And also we are not Canadian PR specialists, so we may not be the right people to do a comparison. But if you want to live in New Zealand, I can vouch you as somebody who's lived here for a very, very long time, uh, 17 years now. That it's a great country, so you must choose New Zealand. Send us your CV to info at ajvglobal.com and we will let you know what are your options. Uh, Achini Vijay Singh, when the rule will publish, when the immigration minister decides to publish it, Achini, but send us an email to info at ajvglobal.com and your CV so that we can see whether you qualify for what kind of work visas. Uh, Ramraj Mano, tell us about getting into Australia with subclass 476 and getting PR for settling down. Absolutely no idea, Ramraj. I have no clue about Australia. In future, we might develop that expertise, but for the time being, we are uh, fully focused on New Zealand, so wrong person to ask. Elvia Susan Elias, after one year PG diploma, how long can I stay back to find a job and apply for resident visa? Uh, you will get a post-study work visa, Elvia, and in that post-study work visa period, you need to find a relevant job, and based on that, you can apply for future visas. Once you cross a particular salary threshold, then you can apply for a resident visa, so that's the way it works. So just you send your um, CV to info at ajvglobal.com or if you're already in New Zealand, to mary.joseph at ajvglobal.com and we'll help you. Basil Sajo here that there would be a three year stay back approved for a level eight program. Is that right? No idea. We are all waiting for that, uh, Basil. Uh, uh, Shai Shao Bajaj, I'm an AJV client here in Hamilton. Please connect with me, your local team here. My number is 021. Oh, thanks, Shaisha. Lovely to have you here. You know what? I'll call you as soon as this is over, okay? Uh, if I was still in time, I would have made a live phone call. But I'll call you soon after this uh, live session is over, Shaisha. But thanks for connecting. Your first point of contact will be Mary, but I'll call and say hi to you. Anyway. All right, cool. Um, Jet Fame. Uh, hello, sir. I've done 12th in commerce, but after that, I'm doing one year diploma in surveying. So, surveying course is suitable for me in New Zealand or Australia. Surveyors are also in shortage in New Zealand, uh, Jack. So I think it's a good idea to consider doing that uh, course here in New Zealand. So I think you need to connect with us and we would be absolutely delighted to help you. Sriram, what's the difference between Canada and New Zealand taxes for international students? Uh, please ask Uncle Google. I may not be the right one. Uh, Ramraj Manot, okay, same thing, Australia. Guri Sab, uh, uh, sir, I'm coming in. NZ on 1st August and my courses Web Development and Design Level 5 and Software Development Level 6. All the best. You've chosen a good course. Mm, Nikhil Ravi, sir, can you tell me about Silver Fund Visa? Frankly, I don't have a lot of idea about the Silver Fund, Nikhil. So, so just you go to the Immigration Department website and read about it. There's a lot of information there. And last question, how is the future for IT in New Zealand? Excellent question, Krishna. Brilliant. We have a massive shortage of uh, skilled IT workers in New Zealand. Uh, I've made a couple of videos uh, on, and put it on YouTube. So please go to YouTube, search for Arun Jacob New Zealand. And I've made at least two or three videos about how good and how solid the requirement for IT professionals in New Zealand is. So that's it for today. I've nailed all my questions and I'm very happy about it, guys. So thanks as always for watching my live broadcast and this uh, live broadcast on YouTube as well as on Facebook. It's going to become a recording and it's going to be sitting there. So if you guys want to refer it back later, please come back and visit. Uh, and also, please share it with your family and friends because everybody who is planning to migrate through education or direct migration needs honest information and good services. We pride ourselves at AJB on being very friendly and very frank and putting it right there in your face. You like it, you take it. You don't like it, doesn't matter. We will still be good friends. But as always, thanks for watching my uh, live broadcast. Till the next time, um, say this after me. Ka kite ano, which means see you later in the Maori language. So goodbye from Hamilton, and uh, I'll see you again next week, hopefully. All right? Take care, guys. Bye-bye.